Hello and welcome to another review of a film that I've watched on Mubi. This time I'm reviewing the 1975 Hungarian film Adoption, directed by Marta Mezerosh. This is my review. I have a friend who often laughs when I describe to him some of the art house movies that I've seen and I'm just picturing his face when I tell him about this film, um, that it's Hungarian, that it's in from the 1970s, that it's in black and white, that it's very austere and serious. And I'm just picturing the face that he would have when I told him that. But actually, this is a really interesting little film it, that definitely rewards a viewing. And I didn't know this director at all beforehand. And this is why I love having the movie subscription for for you know this type of movie so I, I i really enjoyed this film it does have a very kind of austere quality but it it's never boring it also is quite compelling um even at the beginning when kata is just in the kitchen doing mundane things i think it's the way it's shot but it it's it's compelling right from the from the start and it's shot in such an interesting way, this film. There is a lot of very close camera work, really close, like where the camera is very close to faces, where it's often panning a room, where it's really close to people. And so people go in and out of focus. Some people are in focus, some people aren't. Um, and it, it just, the cinematography is really, really works for a kind of low key film. I think it's it is really compelling. the The camera work is very intimate. There are some scenes where the characters are so close together, they're much closer together than they would be in the situations that they are. But this allows the camera to be very close, yet have them both in shot. And yeah, I found this very interesting, and it and it works really well. There are some sex scenes and nudity, but the the close camera work is is used in these shots as well, which makes it very gentle and sensual. And so, yeah, the camera work is is set sensual rather than claustrophobic, I would say. Um, there is, I, I describe this film as being quite austere, and it, and, it, and it is, it's austere and it's serious uh, in its themes, but, there is the use of music throughout the film, which does create a, a mood. Um, we're definitely given kind of a gentle, sad emotions um, through the use of music, but somehow it's never sentimental. It manages to, to keep a balance between... Um, it's a kind of strange balance between the austerity and kind of social realism and the, the, the emotion, the emotions of kind of sadness and, you know, even allowing ourselves to enjoy the music to, to, to feel some emotion. And I mean, this is in terms of theme, this is the centerpiece of this film is the relationship between the, the two women and I found this relationship intriguing very clever and ambiguous and you know at times they they are so close together there are several shots as I was explaining earlier several shots where they're so, they're, they're so close together that they look like they're about to kiss and this makes the relationship very ambiguous because you do almost wonder if something sexual is about to happen between them although it never apparently does the relationship is isn't sexual but I, I really like that that ambiguity the the dynamics of the relationship are quite edgy the, their their intimacy comes their intimacy comes very quickly and and I'm not sure you can trust it you know it feels edgy the dynamics are such that they're a little bit unstable and indeed Kata does at one point slap her around the face because she's appears to be crying but then Anna is actually laughing and you know I quite liked this that you weren't certain at some level this is a kind of fairy story that has an apparently happy ending where 
you know, Anna gets married and, and Kata adopts a child. But in fact, there is something underneath this which, you know, doesn't allow you to, 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 to see this as a kind of happy ending. And, and another thing I thought was clever about the relationship that at one level they really did seem to find some enjoyment and um, kind of bond with each other. But at the same time, I did... I always questioned the relationship, whether it was a little bit superficial, whether they were kind of both substituting for for obvious lacks that each of them had in their life, that they were kind of friends of convenience. Um, so I really liked that. The gender politics are very kind of present in this film. The men get to decide everything. Um, Yet, Kata does retain a kind of independence within this um, very unequal, um, unfair system. Um, obviously, this is set during um, communist times in Hungary. Um, the film doesn't directly address this at all. It's not, it's not really explicit, but... I did wonder if all through this film there are dogs barking in the background. Wherever the, wherever the characters seem to go, there always seem to be dogs barking. And this did just give a kind of general sense of unease, whether that's some reference to, to the political situation or, or the gender situation, or, or whether just generally it's meant to leave us feeling a little bit uneasy throughout the whole film. As I say, this, this isn't a film which takes us through to a clearly kind of happy ending. Um, it's also quite interesting that the film several times shows us the working conditions in the factory where there is lots of dust from, I think they're working with wood, and there's lots of dust. And at the end of the day, they have to use this air pump to kind of blow all the dust off them. And... and we see this several times without it being too obvious as a political statement. I think that there is a kind of question mark raised over the, the, the working conditions. Um, so there's a lot in this film. Um, I really liked the ending that it was left open. You know, Anna gets her guy and, and everyone agrees that she can get married, but it clearly isn't a happy ending. We're, we're shown a a hint of already things um, not being so good between her and her new husband. Um, and yet everyone thinks um, that her getting married is the best thing for her, um, even though it kind of clearly isn't. She's so young and so damaged um, that, you know, the chance of this marriage actually working is is very slim and that's actually really sad um i also really liked the final shot of kata running for the bus and then the frame freezes in fact i thought um i thought the streaming had frozen <laughs> for a second but in fact that was the end of the film and i think you know she's she's got her adopted child and yeah i'm not sure what that end of that final scene is is telling us she was you know, nearly missed the bus, but clearly she was going to get it. Um, maybe, you know, life is difficult and and we're always catching up. And yeah, I think, you know, for both characters, it was um, giving us a clear indication that although they both got what they wanted, um, this isn't a kind of fairy tale ending. It it, it finishes in an, in, an, in an austere way. So overall, I would say this is quite a low-key film that really packs a, a big punch. Um, definitely not a boring old black and white film and something that I would highly recommend. Um, next week, I'm going to watch um, Labyrinth of Cinema, a 2019 film directed by Nobuhiko Obayashi. See you then. <laughs>